And there are all kinds uh, of shortages in Sri Lanka right now, shortages of essential goods like gas cylinders, of kerosene, of petrol and diesel. Um, there are shortages of milk powder. Um, there's actually, uh, you know, uh, even a shortage of about 50 essential drugs at state hospitals. Um, so life is difficult in the country. The government isn't able to buy and supply enough fuel to power plants. And that means uh, that we've been given daily power cut schedules, uh, sometimes for up to about seven and a half hours a day. How has it been allowed to get this bad? Um, there are quite a lot of uh, factors, and actually how the question of how to attribute responsibility is a complex one. Um, Sri Lanka and other emerging markets are always going to be more vulnerable to external shocks like you know, the pandemic or a war in Ukraine, which is going to cause um, oil prices to, to, to change. Um, and that's in part because advanced economies can actually borrow during such periods, but our countries will have limited access to um, both funding and financial markets. Uh, but you know, given what's in Sri Lanka's control, policymakers have actually acted quite recklessly as well. Um, while other countries in Asia saw their results grow, Sri Lanka's reserves have actually dropped by nearly 80% from uh, 2019 to 2021. Um, and our economy has been in poor shape for quite, for quite a while. Um, uh, but you know, recent economic policy has not done much to make that better. It's actually made um, the current situation much worse. We lost um, a third of our tax base and a quarter of our tax revenue by imposing tax cuts in 2019. Um, the country imposed an overnight chemical fertilizer ban that led uh, our agricultural yields to drop. We spend money inefficiently, um, allocating more to defense now than, uh, than we did during um, a period to actually at war. Um, and we've introduced unsustainable import substitution policies uh, at an artificially pegged exchange rate. Um, and we've continued to rely on financial markets, which you know, help make us more um, vulnerable to this kind of external shock um, to service our debts. But at the same time, we've not maintained confidence with investors and have been shut out of international finance. Mm. So protesters want to throw out the current government. The prime minister says he has now heard their grievances. Is that going to be enough, do you think? Um, well, the government has made some has has taken some steps in the right direction. They recently floated our currency, uh, which will help the country receive more remittances through official channels and allow us to slowly build up our reserves. Um, it began talks with the IMF this month. Um, in a speech uh, yesterday, the president said something to the effect that the government is working and continues to work with the IMF. Um, that implies that de debt restructuring might happen uh, relatively soon, but there's a lot of ambiguity, uh, of, of course, around what exactly that means. These are steps in the right direction, but it's not enough. Um, Sri Lankan policymakers need to build confidence with investors in the short term so that we can pay for our in essential goods, uh, fuel, medicine. Um, but mo most importantly, they need to provide us with the leadership that we need to tackle our debt sustainability issues, right? And that means uh, um, doing the, the kind of structural reform in our economy that we so desperately need, whether raising taxes, you know, getting rid of inefficient loss-making SOEs or increasing female labor force participation. Um, so until all of that happens, uh, I'm going to remain uh, cautiously, well, I'm going to remain pessimistic, let's say. Yeah. So what would your judgment be of this new Rajapaksa government? Of course, the, the two brothers are in co control as prime minister and president. The um, government came into power in 2019 um, and it has rapidly lost. It, it came into power with a, a huge mandate um, and uh, with incredible popularity, but that popularity has waned uh, rapidly. So they've lost about 30% um, of their popularity, according to some uh, a, a recent survey that was out. Um, I'm not sure that um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not uh, entirely sure that this government uh, is taking the amount of accountability and responsibility that it needs to to be able to steer our economy in um, and in, in the right path and make those uh, structural changes that it needs to to get the country running again. Um, but, um, you know, uh, a, a lot remains to be seen. Amita, you know, when you talk of um, the government not necessarily fulfilling its, uh, its program well, uh, is there an effective opposition that could challenge them at this point? Um, I think the opposition seems to, at least to an, uh, an external observer, to be somewhat fractured. Um, and 
uh, even at you know the, the larger protests that we saw on Tuesday, most of the public sentiment seemed to be directed um, at the government. So it, it was more of an anti-government uh, sentiment rather than um, a rallying uh, of, of the people behind a certain uh, opposition or party or, or figure. Um, and unfortunately, um, I, I still think that the opposition needs to, to put together a comprehensive economic plan um, and uh, present this to the public in a in a, a compelling way and um, unfortunately I don't see that yet but uh, hopefully uh, over time that is something that will develop interesting to watch good to talk thank you so much thank you for having me